Hello. Many of you, I'm pretty sure, know Jesus' statement, I am the light of the world that we can find in the Gospel according to John. However, in the Gospel of Matthew, we have a different spin of this idea, of this concept of life. In the fifth chapter, uh, famously uh, known, famously called the Beatitude, uh, Jesus uh, goes with, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, blessed are the, the, those who mourn, blessed are the meek, and so on. And then Jesus, speaking to the crowd present, bring it home in terms that they can really understand with very down-to-earth example, if I may say. And he says, among other, you are the light of the world. And that might be surprising for most over there that day, and maybe for most of us today, because usually when we have this idea, who are the light of the world? We might think of someone important, famous people, or certain individual that has uh, a great deal of charisma. We will say something like, they glow. When they enter a room, we see them. But you, everyone, you who are watching, me, are the light of the world. In a way, the most unlikely people project this light. And notice here is there's no conditional. Jesus did not say, well, if you do this, you respect the law, you follow me. If you behave well, you might be the light of the world. No, no, you are. Present tense, right now. And it's not necessarily also reserved that because you're better, because you're church people, because you follow me, you're the light of the world. No, you are the light of the world. Because we just has this capacity to reflect God's light in our world. We do not necessarily produce this light. It's not necessarily ours. It's God's light that we reflect, that we share with the world. So this is our call. This is who we are in this world. And to hide, hide this light under uh, a bushel basket or inside our churches or to try to limit to, I don't know, uh, our friends, the people of our community, those we agree with, would be a mistake because this attempt would be foolish. We cannot control light. And to put it under a bush of basket would be quite dangerous, in fact. No, this light needs to be visible. It ought to be visible. And if this is frightening for some, because if we need to be visible, this light of ours needs to be visible, it provides a great sense of empowerment for others. Because it reminds us that we are one player in a long continuum. We are in line of a long traditions that comes from uh, the prophets of the First Testament, speaking in the name of God, bringing that vision, reflecting this light from the first disciple, the first apostle who went through the world to spread the good news for all of our forefathers and foremothers in faith, for all the mentors, the teachers, the parents, those who were there to shape us and make us who we are. This a call to claim our place in this involving story and at our turn to enlighten the path of those who are following us and also those who are unsure, those who are wondering. And to be this light,
basically it's not that difficult. It's a call to try to be the best version of ourselves often, to speak the truth, to show compassion, to live to its fullness the life God's, uh, God calls us to follow, to be the light of the world in fact could be fairly simple. It begins with all of little things that we take for granted, but like light, they have a huge impact on our world. It brings light. It brings a little more. Sometimes we cannot always touch, but sh for sure, make a huge difference. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being there. Until next time, take care of yourself. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. Take care and bye-bye.